Please stand as you are able. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believed in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall he die. I know that my believe will live. Now he shall stand in that day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see him. And I shall see him on myself, and my eyes shall be whole. And not as a stranger. For none of us liveth in himself. No one dieth to himself. For if we live, we live unto the Lord. And if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Lord be with you. And and the Let us pray. Amen. O God of grace and glory, we remember before thee this day our brother Ralph. We thank thee for giving him to us as family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In thy boundless compassion, console us in the Lord. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth, until by thy call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously, we pray, with Michael, Heather, Jacob, David, Stephen, Douglas, Will, Ellen, and David in their grief, surround them with thy love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in thy goodness, and strength to the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. 
but the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster. And they're going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Will you please turn your bulletin to page four and join me in reading responsibly Psalm 139, verses 1 through 11. (coughs) Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the most parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and in your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. A reading from the Revelation to John. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried aloud in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat, for the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will arise again. Martha said to, to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you and to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. I share these verses from Psalm 91 because from a very young age, on his own, Ralph found, found ways to worship the Lord. Sally told me that he would get on a church bus, not caring so much about what denomination the congregation represented. He simply wanted to see Jesus more clearly, love him more dearly, and follow him more nearly. And the seeking would be a lifelong pattern for Ralph's journey. As he grew in faith, he came to understand that following more nearly would find expression in service, first as a layman and later as a deacon of the church. Ralph Douglas Taylor was a man of deep faith. I'm sure as physical limitations and health issues curtailed his ability to serve, he never questioned God's love for him and his love of God never faltered. I can imagine that in the confines of home and bed, he discovered new aspects of his relationship with God. The, the struggles of the last parts of Ralph's life make me think of these verses from the book of Isaiah. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I believe Ralph's faith helped them to appreciate Isaiah's thought. With much love and support from his beloved Sally, and in faith, Ralph waited for the Lord. It may not have been easy or comfortable, but now he is free from the prison of a weakened body that no longer served his intense desire to participate in life and to be engaged in the community of the church. Ralph waited, and now he is carried into the nearer presence of God. He waited for the Lord, and now he is strong again and walks confidently with God. To par paraphrase the familiar hymn, Jesus walks with him and talks with him and tells him he is his own. And even in death, Ralph loves us still. 
Now fully embraced by God, I imagine Ralph reaching back to make this kind of witness. Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint and God does not grow weary. God's understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Ralph, I am sure, would want each and every one of us to discern anew who God is and who we are in relationship to God. Ralph's adult life is a life of service. He served in our armed forces. He served as a police officer, a homicide detective when he retired. Many of you here remember him particularly as a deacon of the church. Some of you may know that part of being a deacon in this diocese is engaging in a ministry beyond the walls of the church. When discerning his path to ordination, that ministry for Ralph was with victims of violent crime. Why? As a police officer, Ralph had been frustrated by the restrictions placed on the ways he could relate to those victims. His compassion collided with police boundaries, and Ralph was always a respecter of boundaries. And above and beyond the requirements of official responsibilities, Ralph was always willing to help. For example, I remember when my mother died, I was trying to figure out how to get some of her furniture from her place to mine. I recalled that Ralph and Sally had rented a van, so I asked for details. Ralph's response was basically, when do you need the van and when do you need me? At times like these, I'd like to share this quotation. Those who do not believe in God or who doubt the existence of God often argue that if a good and just God existed, God would not permit terrible evils to exist and persist. They also assert that we embrace hope because we deceive ourselves. Writer Andrew Greeley suggests that there are only two answers to the question of whether hope is valid. For the first answer, he quotes Shakespeare's Macbeth. Life is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. For the alternative, he quotes Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. There is something afoot in the universe, something that looks like gestation and birth. Either life is completely absurd or there is goodness and purpose in life. Ralph Taylor, to me, embodied the belief that there is goodness and purpose in life. Ask anyone who knew him well. He inspired us with a spirit and energy that turned his belief into action for the welfare and well-being of his family, the church, and the community. As a devout and faithful Christian, Ralph believed goodness and purpose came from and through God's continuing presence and activity in our lives and in the world. I can say that my life and ministry have been greatly blessed by working with and sharing friendship with Ralph. In tribute, I share a verse from a favorite hymn of mine. This verse expresses so much of what I saw in Ralph how he lived his life, and the example he sets for us. Lord, you bless with words assuring. I am with you to the end. Faith and hope and love restoring. We serve as you, may we serve as you intend. And amid the cares that claim us, hold in mind eternity. With the Spirit's gifts empower us, for the work of ministry.
as we celebrate and give thanks for Ralph's life, and as we rejoice in all that he was, all that he shared with us, let us acknowledge that we are sad and that we miss him. The pain and the sorrow and the loneliness are all too real. The emptiness can be cavernous, and the sense of absence can be overwhelming, because we know they would never be filled again with the familiar, the comfortable, and the unique ways that were Ralph Taylor. As, as we move on, I am painfully aware of that absence, but I am given strength and hope in thinking about Ralph getting comfortable in the place where Jesus prepared for him and he, as he feasts at the heavenly table. So today we entrust the soul of our loved one, Ralph, and we trust our lives anew to God. We do so with confidence because whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest in their labors. While you remain seated, let us pray. We seem to give him back to you, dear Lord, who gave him to us. Yet as you did not lose him in giving him to us, so we have not lost him by his return to you. Not as the world gives do you give, O lover of soul. What you give, you take not away. For what is yours is ours always, if we are yours. Life is eternal, love is immortal, and death is only a horizon. And a horizon is nothing save the limit of our sight. Lift us up, O God, that we may see further Cleanse our eyes that we may see more clearly. Draw us close to you that we know, may know ourselves nearer to our beloved ones who are with you. And while your son prepares a place for us, prepare us for that happy place, that where they are and you are, we too may be through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the assurance of eternal life given at baptism, let us proclaim our faith and say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father of all men. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. For our brother Ralph, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Lord, thou counseled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Ralph, and dry the tears of those who weep. Thou wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our soul. Thou raised the dead to life, give to our brother eternal life. Thou promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our brother to the joys of heaven. Our brother was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give him fellowship with all thy saints. He was nourished with the body and blood. Grant him a place at the table in thy heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our brother. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to thee our brother Ralph, who was reborn by water and spirit and holy baptism. Grant that his death may recall to us thy victory over death, and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in thy Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where thou hast led the way, and where let us live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to ages of ages. Amen. Amen.
Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with thy saints. Thou only art immortal, the creator and maker of humankind. And we are mortal, formed the earth, and unto earth shall we return. For so thou didst ordain when thou createst me, saying, Dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. All we go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to thy servant with thy saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life and rest. Into thy merciful hands, O merciful Savior, we commend thy servant, Ralph. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech thee, a sheep of thine own fold, a lamb of thine own flock, a sinner of thine own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of thy mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God, Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.